uh, knowledge, you could say, is knowing that a tomato is actually a fruit and not the vegetable. Not everybody knows that. That's knowledge. Wisdom is knowing that putting a tomato in a fruit salad wouldn't be very smart. That wouldn't taste good. So wisdom is taking some knowledge and applying it. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. We're going through the alphabet and we're at the letter K. And K, well, here it is. K stands for for knowledge. Now, uh, knowledge, you could say, is knowing that a tomato is actually a fruit and not the vegetable. Not everybody knows that. That's knowledge. Wisdom is knowing that putting a tomato in a fruit salad wouldn't be very smart. It wouldn't taste good. So, wisdom is taking some knowledge and applying it and understanding it. I want to talk about knowledge and where do we get it? The, I mean the knowledge that makes all the difference in the world. I learned a lot about math uh, when I was uh, growing up, when I was in uh, elementary, junior high, senior high, college, but I have not used much of anything that I learned. It did teach me how to think, but I didn't lose, use that knowledge about math. And of course anything that was complicated I've been able to just use my phone as a calculator and do it. But the knowledge that we can use the most is the knowledge from the Bible, the biblical wisdom that we can apply to our lives. And without the Bible, uh, it's all just about conjuring up theories, uh, philosophies that may not be true. But when I see a Bible, I believe it to be the Word of God course, sadly, the, um, the men in a church, the dedicated men coming on a Sunday morning, more of them looked at pornography this past week than looked at their Bible. I think that's pretty sad. I've been fortunate to now uh, just finish my 15th Bible project, and I've, I'm just so grateful to be able to be part of something bigger than myself, to help people accept the knowledge of God and the wisdom that's found in Scripture. I'll tell you about a couple of things. The Life Recovery Bible, well, it's you know been around about 30 years and has sold over 3 million copies and going very strong. There's even a King James version of the Life Recovery Bible. And this month that I'm doing this, and every month since I can remember, this has been on the best-selling Bible list in the top 10. Pretty unusual. The best-selling men's study Bible is this, Every Man's Bible, and it's just full of manly uh, resources, and, and it's laid out in a way that, you know, a man would really like it. It's got little snippets here and boxes and fun things to learn about and how long it would take to read the book if you decided to, and it's just feature after feature, timelines, little things. It's a great, great Bible. And a lot of men say they didn't really read the Bible until this Bible came along. Uh, Restoration is probably the newest Bible I've done in a while. It's a study Bible based on the word restore. It's got great devotions and great study. And then I'll mention the Spiritual Renewal Bible that Dave Stoop and I did. One Bible of the year. And it beat out some really wonderful uh, Bibles. And that still exist in the NIV and is published by Zondervan. The opposite, of course, of knowledge is, is uh, toxic and is poisonous. And I wrote a book about that, Toxic Faith. And I took some of the, uh, well, I took 21 beliefs that supposedly are from Scripture, but they're not. And I talk about, you know, why uh, they cause damage to us when we believe them and what we need to do about it. All right, so there's a word called chump. 
and uh, it's kind of an old-fashioned word, but I don't ever want to be a chump. And what I'm talking about is other people know stuff, but I don't. And one of the ways that we can be assured of never appearing stupid, uh, two things. We need to be more quiet than talk, and then also we need to be students of the Bible. We need to learn as much as we can from Scripture and follow it. Now, some people would say that the truth would set you free, that that's a great verse about knowledge. But here's, here's what it really says. It says that if you follow my teaching, this is John 8, 31 and 32. If you follow my teaching, you're truly my disciples. It says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we have to follow the teaching of Jesus, not just know it. If we just had to know it, then all you'd have to do if you had a problem, didn't know what to do, you'd memorize scripture and then everything in your life would change. But that isn't true. Now, there was a controversial tree back in the beginning of this earth, uh, and the tree was called the tree of knowledge. Well, it was of knowledge of good and evil, and, you know, Adam and Eve were in the garden. They had two jobs. Don't eat that fruit. Free of knowledge, and watch out for snakes. They didn't do either, and it was a snake that got them in really, really big trouble. The tree of knowledge, when it was eaten by Adam and Eve, the fruit there, they became aware of the downside. You know, there wasn't a downside before they did that. And the knowledge that they had was of evil, of, of crummy stuff, bad things. So we, we really do want to avoid taking part in forbidden fruit. We want to have boundaries, limitations, restrictions. And within them, we want to be free to exercise our faith and to share our faith and to be free from all the dependencies, the the obsessions and compulsions that fill the lives of so many people. Knowledge. Well, you just can't get too much of knowledge. Well, I guess you could if you had so much knowledge you became arrogant and boastful and prideful. But knowledge plus humility, it brings a person to the place of servanthood from an attitude of humility. And that's what we want to see. That's, that's my take on knowledge. And if you are without a Bible and you need some more of God's wisdom and knowledge, you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and you can order a Bible there. But in the meantime, maybe you pick up a Bible uh, at the house and you decide it's time that I start my day with some scripture. Maybe one verse or going to bed, I do it then. But you, you just don't want to ignore God's truth on a daily basis for your life. I'm going to see you next time. And I'm going to deal with that old letter L. Not hell, but L. And I hope you'll join me then for Going Deeper. We'll see you. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.